Welcome to the Workbench After Hours podcast. My name is Keith and I'm your host. This is where we talk about the firearms community, shop talk, and everyday life experiences. Uh, welcome back to the Workbench After Hours podcast. This is episode 42, I believe. I think so. I think so. I should have looked it up. I forgot. I always forget <laughs> to look it up, but 42-ish. But we have Chris here. Jacob is back with us for a third time. So good to have you back with Thanks us. So, Chris, do your thing, man. Which one do you want me to start with? I'll start the, with the what we always start okay. with. Okay. We'll do... This is the Jack Daniels Triple Mash. So it comes from three bonded whiskey barrels. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just their rye, a mash mix, and then their whiskey. And then they bond it all together, and it sits for about four years, what they say. So they said the notes we should be get is honey, malt, and soft oak. So it'll be very interesting to try. I'm surprised it actually tells you how long it sits, because every other Jack Daniels bottle, yeah, it doesn't say you. an age. Nope. Really? This is the or first one that a was, mature date. Yeah, mature date. But Maybe this one actually because it's government bonded. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But it says for four years at least. But I bought a bottle of this down at the, the distillery, and I haven't wanted to open it yet because I'm like, well, what if I can't get another one here? Finally found them. They're starting to come out now, so I picked another one up. Like Now is the time to try it. I've seen a couple of reviews on it, and they say it's totally different from all the other jacks, and it's like surprisingly different. So I'm kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it said you were supposed to get, what were the flavor notes that we were supposed to get on it? Honey, malt, malt, and, and like a light oak. I can get the honey. It smells sweet. Yeah. It's not all the bites on the back end. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like drinking it or even holding it in your mouth, like it has no bite. No, it's good. You could tell you could tell us that fit. <clears throat> Um, hundred proof, but other than that, I mean the actual yeah. flavors of it. Yeah, it's totally different. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely. The blind taste test, I would not say that was Jack Daniels. Yeah, I like. Not it, that yeah. it's a bad thing. No, but I it's, mean it, it, it's, it's different smooth. from their other yeah. profiles. Yeah, yeah. There's it. It's sweet, but I think it's it doesn't have that like caramel taste to it. Yeah, it's, the honey is different. I think. Yeah. Good. It's good. I like it. <laughs> Definitely has the heat on the back end. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll go away once uh, you add <laughs> ice. ice to it. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Yeah, and then the other one that was similar to this that's coming out now, too, is that Bonded. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that one. I think it's just Jack Daniels Hunter Proof is all it really is. Oop. <laughs> Wait, are we allowed to show that? I, from what I heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> We just, we've list. been specifically leaving it on the table, <laughs> facing the camera. I should get shirts and wear that. <laughs> Do I? Oh, I don't. I got a shirt with that logo on it, but yeah. All right. So now we got the whiskey out of the way, Chris. You got the next part, too. Oh, dang. It's all you. This is a Chris show today. Wow, this is crazy. So what we have here is the gun of the week. It is a Ruger LCB custom. I don't know if you all can see that. Let me see if I can change camera angles. There you go. So it's hard to see, but you can get a little glimpse of it. So they got the regular LCP, and they also got the LCP custom, which is what this is, and they have, a, I think, an LCP2 now. Mm -hmm. So the only really difference that I've researched and found on it is that this has stainless steel slides and guides, and it's got the red anodized trigger, and it's also a lighter pull. So this was my concealed so it came camera. with that trigger in it. Yeah. Nice. So, and this is the difference between this and the LCP2 is this is hammer fired. Yep. The LCP2s are striker fired, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not a huge fan of hammer fired just because of that yeah. long take up on that first trigger. You can't really oh. feel it on this gun because of the lighter trigger, but yeah, compared to my SIG. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's definitely going to. Yeah. Is it? So, that's, that's a really small gun. It's, it's what you would consider a pocket gun. Yeah. It pretty much is. I had to buy the extended clip because. Uh, it, like the extended what? Or magazine. <laughs> <laughs> God dang, Hunter. <laughs> Bad influence. So, yeah. So it only holds one extra, but it gives you that room to have your actual pinky on it and get a good grip. 
Yeah, that makes a world of difference. It's oh. not about the round. It's about yeah. the extension. With yeah. it being that small and thin, how do you think it feels shooting? It's snappy. It's picking on ammo because it is a 380. Yeah. So so one one thing that... Oh, gosh. So much... I, I hit Do Not Disturb on my watch. <laughs> I guess it did not go to my phone. <laughs> oh, you actually have to t- hit the on button. <laughs> on the phone you just click it and it goes yeah. on all right good to know but like at gun shows and everything if a guy's with his wife or girlfriend or whatever they're trying to find her something like this so she could fit it in her purse or whatever something really small i i highly yeah i mean disagree with that because i try and talk him out of them like it sounds like that's what you would want but you want the 380 helps but the small gun doesn't yeah mm-hmm. it's i you gotta I like having that. You got to have that grip, I think, really. Ruger plays into that hard, too, though, because, and then you notice that out at gun shows, is on the table, there'll be a black one, and then there'll be like a two pinks, two purples, and yep. all white. You know, when they get to pick the color, it, it's more exciting. You know? <laughs> <clears throat> I want the Tiffany blue one. Well, do they know you could <laughs> have it custom Sarah coded, whatever color or design you want to. Oh, man. <laughs> that was when I used to sell car stereos. Most of the women, the big thing was like, does it change colors or what color is the backlight? And it's like, it has nothing to do with sound. But yeah, I of mean, course, of course it does. It's a great concealed carry gun. It's freaking tiny. I literally got it in a little phone case. That's what I carried it in. Do you have that phone case on you? I did. Oh. I don't know where it went. But yeah, it looks like he's carrying around a little. I don't know. It's so small, <laughs> you lost it. I probably. <laughs> literally a phone case so you're on that camera so that literally camera. just put it in this phone case there you go. It, and no one will ever know you're carrying a gun except for <laughs> that part well, that's what's under the shirt yeah <laughs> so so you keep this in your truck usually yeah it's in my center console usually or if i need to go into anywhere i'll throw it on so nice it's even easier when it's winter hits you can put it in your coat and it slides right in, so they're really easy to take apart. And <sighs> it is. There's a little trick to it, but yeah, there is. It's uh, it's a pain in the butt. I think sometimes. I did a video on it. Yeah, I think somewhere. you did too. You did do a tear down and cleaning of it. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Yeah, I, you did. It was dirty. <laughs> yeah, I hate dirty guns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's literally just sits in the truck. <laughs> but nice. Yeah, that's the gun of the week, the LCP Custom. Cool. Check so. it out. <laughs> So, um, if you saw the title to this podcast, we can get M16s from the government really cheap. Jacob, tell us how. I'm going to order mine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, you saw Call of the Wars thing on it. Yeah. And apparently, this couple that's into flipping military surplus stuff, like, they were just buying cases and crates, like, you know, watertight stuff. And they bought all these M16 cases and I don't know how many they opened, but it was pretty early on. They opened up a case, and it is all the way full. I think they hold 16 or so M16s, and they're valued at $25,000 plus a piece and just still sitting there. And we're past that era of M16s, so like mm-hmm. God knows when those were forgot about in there. <laughs> They've been in there a while. I'm going to pull up a picture of the crate. So this is this is the picture of it. Unfortunately, the ATF found out. So this is them seizing. But they, they didn't find out. The people that found them contacted the yeah. ATF directly. Well, I thought they called local law enforcement first. Then they said, probably directed and then them to I think ATF. law enforcement contacted ATF. But, but these are they they meant to buy these cases uh, right here. So this was the the ad. There's a government surplus website that people buy stuff off of, and. And they, they were probably calculated what they could, you know, we can sell these for $200 a piece, we'll double our money or right. triple our money. Because I think what it broke down to per pallet is each one was like, what, 100 bucks yeah. for yeah. each case. And so they thought they were getting these empty cases that they were going to sell. And when they got delivered and opened them up, this is what they found. Oh, That'd could you so imagine awesome. that feeling? <laughs> like, hell yeah. <laughs> well, I'm surprised they even checked them. Like the weight might have been why they found that one, too, because it obviously would weigh significantly oh, more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I could see where a company like that would just ship that out if they were just selling. I would, if I bought 
a hundred cases then I and I was told they're empty. I'm not opening a hundred cases no. for no reason. Now we're gonna start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I just can't like just opening one up and seeing that. And not that, you know, it's not a semi auto AR. Like this is an actual M sixteen M sixteen, the one that Joe Biden hates and everybody <laughs> else that he said he thinks we have these, but yeah. we don't. Yeah. This is what the actual military they look freaking brand new, man. I could not imagine. I'd be uh, doing the happy dance. I wonder what that paperwork says. <laughs> like, what's on that paperwork? I don't know. I and unfortunately, it went to somebody that I've heard they're not gun friendly. Like, they don't like guns, so that's <laughs> just super weird to be into military surplus, yeah. right? <laughs> but it's like stuff like that happens to the people to that the just... people that hate guns. Why can't that like? What happened to one of us? <laughs> right. So I, I'm like trying to think if that were to happen to me. I've thought about this too. I'm like, what would I do? <laughs> if I had a storage place to put it in, I would probably store them away for a while. And if I don't hear anything, I take one out and go shoot it. <laughs> or if uh, they contact me or, you know, for whatever reason, I'm like, all right, I don't want to get in trouble or anything. Contact the ATF. I find a way to keep one, like hide it. Be like, I don't know. It was never there. I haven't gone through all these crates. Yeah. Right? I would have just said I sold the crate. Then they would be like, okay, on their way. Yeah, but how, I mean. Who'd you sell it to, though? They'd want to know that. I don't know. I've sold it on eBay. But, I mean, I doubt they even have a register. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There probably is a registration. That's probably what that paperwork is. But you could make that disappear if you had possession of it. Yep. But I would. I would. It would be tough keep to keep one and get rid of the rest. It would be tough to get rid of them. I've thought about that. Like, do you, is it worth committing that big of a felony? Like, You'd be considered an arms dealer, like yeah. an illegal arms dealer. I mean, you're talking over a quarter million dollars. Well, not not in... just <laughs> you're dealing arms. You're dealing with class three weapons at that point. Yeah, like... <laughs> and to sell that on the black market, I mean, not being connected, like what you, you're going to get a tenth of what it's actually worth for 100 percent of the risk. Like I don't know, it's it's a sketchy road to go down, but it'd be so hard not to keep one. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be so hard not to keep one. Or a whole right? case. <laughs> yeah. I think you'd have to keep the whole case. I w- yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to keep the whole case or explain why only one of a full case is missing. Like, that's even harder well, to Well, I'd be explain. like, okay, well, you guys, somebody fucked up and sent me these anyway. So, obviously, you're not keeping good track of them. So, there's one short. Are you sure that's not something that that guy messed up on anyway? Like, you obviously can't keep track of them. You break them down, keep the lower internals full automatic, and rebuild them as custom-looking rifles so it's less suspicious. Yeah, have your own, and then AR. sell, and then sell mil spec parts because it's not questionable why you would sell. You know, I just, <laughs> I would love to have that feeling of opening those up and be like, oh my god, like, and then there would be nights of just pure terror, like <laughs> right. I'm gonna go to jail for this. But like, you didn't know. I mean, they whoever shipped those is kind of in the wrong because they illegally shipped them first yeah, of all, yeah, and they sent them to I don't know if they went to their but house or wherever. Still, but, it doesn't innocence of the law doesn't get you out of it but i'd be like i haven't opened up the crates yet well the thing is too like if they no, no, if they did not contact the police they would have never no one would ever know oh yeah at that point did I, and call in the wars video didn't go into it and i don't know if we know this but who messed up and had, how did this happen it had to be the, the, the fbi is involved now trying to figure that out like i'd be interested to see because that's <laughs> i mean that's not a small Fuck up. That's a. I, you also wonder, like, <laughs> you're could, it, could it have been intentional? Like, hey, you tried to bid on this lot and that pallet went out with the wrong lot. Yeah. Like, it could be a way to, to, like, like flip. Like, they're trying to sell it maybe across over, overseas or something like that. Yeah. And it would be a way to get it. Got it mixed if up. If you were doing that, you know, internally and they messed up. Man. <laughs> I need to start getting into government, government contracts. Government surplus? No, like, actual government <laughs> contracts. Have you ever seen the movie War Dogs? Oh, I have. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> or uh, Lord of War? Yeah. It's the only That's where the money is. It ain't what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the volume like that. And then they're buying, you know, $17,000 rifles at, at bulk cost. Yeah. Like, Freaking awesome. All the paperwork on that stuff would be miserable, though, and dealing with each different country. but Probably about the same as the collector has. <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's like, man, and because that goes to the story where... We told on the last episode where a guy ordered a, a screen on Amazon and got a shotgun. shotgun. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, 
Why can't this happen to me? Yep. There's packages showing up on my front door all the day, all the time. <laughs> Why can't that just be? Again, I'm not expecting. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't. A while ago, there were several gun shops that were selling. They called them M16. They were burst fire internals with a trigger to put in an AR. Mm-hmm. But it, it stated on there, do not put this in a rifle. As soon as you do, it becomes a felony. Don't pair it yeah. with a gun. Don't even store it with a gun was their big stipulation. And somehow that allowed them to publicly sell this. I mean, it, I saw several ads. Oh, yeah, and I get them all the time still to this day. <clears throat> and it's just like, you can sit there and do that, but yet you're going after all these other triggers and yeah, stuff. But the you're new not triggers, going after the yeah. three bursts that are right there. So, yeah, I mean, that's full-on military grade yeah. parts. That it's... I have not bought one of those kits. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. But I, wish, I wish. I wish. I don't know. what I'd probably be happy. Just open that crate and just, oh. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Oh, cool. YouTube video time. <laughs> <laughs> Those look like they were in phenomenal condition. Yeah. I know. Yeah. For an M16 to be in that kind of a shape, it's like, well, and the cool thing about, like, these type of rifles versus, you know, crates of Mosin and Gaunt or whatever, no Cosmoline. Yeah. Like, yeah. These these things don't rust kind of like those old. On top Wilson. of that, like, I'm, I'm itching for two builds right now. One is an 11 and a half inch. Like with a suppressor AR, and the other is a twenty-inch build. I just I want a classic M16 looking rifle. I've been looking at like what I want to do to replicate that, and I, I mean that would be like just a <laughs> gift, like from God. It's like oh, thank you. I've been listening. Here it is. Like here's a real one. Like what? How many gu- how many guns were in per crate? Did it say? I think it was like, sixteen. So sixteen, and you only paid a hundred dollars for the crate. And they had like three or four crates probably. One and Colin showed the the cheapest he could find a actual class three genuine military surplus M sixteen was twenty five thousand dollars. If a civilian were to buy it, I, I as a dealer can buy one for cheaper. Yeah, the dealer. What are the demo? Yeah, the yeah, dealer demo or whatever. Which I I I think <laughs> you should do that. I would, but it's five hundred dollars a year. For so, so much. I mean, but you're thinking <laughs> about the savings on a $25,000 rifle. I just think you got to sell one rifle a year and it's paid for. But it's not like I could just sell it to anybody. I, like, I'd have to keep it. Can't you do suppressors at that point, too? Mm-hmm. Yep. You'd probably make some good money on suppressors. I I could. There's, It just sucks having to hold on to them for so long. Yeah. And the paperwork. There's more yeah, paperwork. you probably need a whole other safe for that portion of the business. And <laughs> yeah. Could be a smaller safe though. Honestly, <laughs> I thought about doing that stuff just to get some of that stuff, try it out, use it for the business, and then you could sell it to another class three dealer or send it back or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, man, five hundred bucks a year less the cost of say I buy a full auto. Okay, cool. Cost of ammo is not cheap right now. <laughs> yeah, true. You're gonna go through a ton of ammo and although as much and that would be really fun, but you're Figure what for a box, a cheap box of twenty. If you're going cheap, two, two, three, it's on like a good 11, day, 12 bucks. I could probably get it as a dealer for, say, eight bucks on a good day, for the cheapest. You know, like <laughs> you'd go through a lot of rounds really quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where am I going to shoot that? Yeah. Because you know, if if you get somewhere where yeah oh, you're out out in the country, but if there's neighbors no, that are not even then. I can tell you it's even sketchy out. I had a buddy that, uh, what was the name of this? It was a small town halfway between here and Pittsburgh. I cannot think of the name. Yes, it was Pleasanton. He had 40 acres out in Pleasanton. There was two neighbors around at all. And we were out there bump firing. We uh, We both had AKs that had real light triggers. And if you held them off your shoulder, they would bump fire off your shoulder. And he got his to do like a whole magazine, like on just one. Bur- I mean, it was very impressive. And within a half an hour, there was a sheriff out there saying, "Hey, I heard you guys are firing full auto weapons out here. We want to go through all your stuff." And we're like, "Look, this is what we were doing. We were just bump firing. You know, it's not illegal on private land. Mm-hmm. Here's the the owners with us. You know." So he's like, "Oh, you guys are good. Like, I believe that's what you were doing." Well, and if I were to do that through the business, I'd be like, "All right, see, I can legally own and shoot this full auto, so that's not the problem." Um, it'd have to be in Kansas because I can't take in NFA items across yeah. state lines. It gets a little funky. I think you have to notify the ATF or something if you do. Like you can, there's guys that do it that like have SBRs and do professional shoots, but like there's some states you can't go through. Like mm-hmm. 
I don't think you can take it on an airplane at all. I think you have to drive it, and the ATF has to be notified of your route and everything, and it's a bigger deal. Yeah, it is. It's not like just taking a semi-auto rifle across state lines, no big deal. That's how Canada does it, though, period. Like, you're only allowed to, you don't have to notify anybody, but you can only transport a gun to and from your safe in a gun range. Like, Can you still you own a gun it. in Canada? I, th- I, mean, I think with rifles now, I don't think you can own a handgun. But yeah, because I, yeah, I know they banned handguns. Yeah. Like, but I, like anything that, that is still allowed, if you wanted to go shoot it, you have like that's the only thing you can do is transfer it in a, from a safe to a lock case to a gun range back. You can't if you get caught with it out for any other reason. Like that sounds it's a felony. very similar to, to an, that age eighteen oh eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could believe that. Hmm. I remember Canada at one point being able to get the really good Yugo SKSs. Like, we couldn't get them here in the States for whatever import reason, so we were stuck with the cheap Chinese ones. But they were getting the really nice Yugo Mill Serp ones, which made me mad. And now I think they're banned there. <laughs> like, damn it. I don't like our import laws are so stupid. It's, it's the same with cars. There's yeah. a lot of cars you can buy in Canada that you Can't couldn't get, get here, or you could, but they're you triple the price. That or wait five years for it to. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. So stupid. All right. If I get that, I have to wait until July. Because if I can say, say I apply for that license like now, it's 500 bucks now, and then it's another $500 July 1st. So you're saying the 4th is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can get the license in a freaking full auto that quick. But, I mean, on GunBroker, there's all, all sorts of demos, uh, full auto demos that are dealer to dealer. It's just... Hopefully I get my money back if I were to, say, buy one, use it, and sell it. Yeah. Just buy a bunch of those packages and crates and you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they're going to be real cautious with what they sell in crates after that. <laughs> but I need to start looking at those websites. And you said when I first, and I forgot it and never looked into it, but you said there was like a government site where they sell guns yeah there's a government like surplus site it's online that and i know like purple wave they do it and every time i've looked they do have like police guns on there and it's like you've got to have an ffl to even bid on this lot of whatever guns i have and they just show you pictures of what it is and give you a brief description i I think i remember looking at that and what deterred me is a lot of them you get the gun you don't know what condition or where it's in so it's really hard to sell not only just a used gun in general, but just one without the case or original paperwork. Kind of hard to do that as a dealer. But if you're selling it, if like you were to sell it. Yeah. Uh, as so long as there was enough markup in it, you just have to know, you know, yeah. well, I'm getting a bulk volume of this and they, they're they going to sell in rough condition, worst case scenario with this. I'm looking at that again. We were also talking before this that you need to get into like dealing with the government like Lord of War or the War Dog movie. That's where the real money is. Yeah. Those government contracts. And they just picked up like the crumbs too at first and were making a killing. You know? Yeah. I mean, they, but a, a little government contract is huge for a normal person. Yep. Then when they picked up the big one, they just didn't pay the one person repackaging $10,000. <laughs> like you idiots. <laughs> yep. That's all but, I had to do is make that one payment and you've been free. All right, so Boomstick Tactical International. <laughs> Worldwide. Worldwide, <laughs> wide, wide. Yeah, I can do that. There was something, something else you, were, you had mentioned that you saw, I think, what Biden said. Oh, yeah, he recently said that the bullet out of an AR-15 is five times faster than any other bullet, like, for any other gun, which is not anywhere near true. No. And on top of that... Uh, Colin Noir had something where he said, he goes, the president just said that an AR-15 bullet flies two and a half times faster than the (laughs) (laughs) SR-71. Didn't he also say, like, AR-15s defend people and Americans? So it's like, thanks, you idiot. Yeah. I think what he meant there is that the military uses those to defend us, but the way he said it it kind of shot himself in the foot. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, I know. That's what we're trying to tell you. We're trying to use (laughs) us for self-defense, you idiot. Yep. And that went away real quick. 
don't know. It's getting embarrassing watching any of his stuff. He's always looking. It's been embarrassing lost. since day one. Well, like I don't know. I just watched one the other day. He was on stage getting ready to leave, and like he forgot where he was, and he's just in there like. <laughs> I saw yeah. that too. Yeah, he like walked back, and he just looks yeah. like he doesn't know what <laughs> I was to like, do. Like, <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, as he was leaving, someone said something, and it confused him. He turns around, and he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, do I go back? Do I leave the stage? Just, just stand, stand here, here and <laughs> act like you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, because you're the president. God, I feel bad for him sometimes. Sometimes, and then he talks about shit I don't like and then I'm like all right I don't feel bad for you anymore yeah and because he did an interview with I think it was 60 minutes a couple weeks ago and like some of the stuff he said was very like he said like said something but then the White House came out later and was like oh this wasn't true yeah it was very controversial like but he said like he doesn't feel old like he feels like he's fit for this job I'm like all right but you know, stuff that, like, say, Trump would say or, like, any other president before, you never had the White House come back and be like, oh, that that's he said true. that wrong or yeah. that's not what he meant or anything like that. But yeah. it seems like with Biden, he'll say something and then the White House comes back and be like, oh, no, that's that's not how it is at all. So who's... <laughs> who's right? Who's, who's wrong? Yeah, who's running the Secretary country has here? It very rough. Like, I, those videos are comical to watch. Her <laughs> trying to defend some of the stuff he says. Dude, I, that... <clears throat> is one job you could not pay me enough to do. The press secretary. No. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's press secretary, though, she was impressive. She, she was. was. She was good. Point. Yeah. But I would not want that job. No. <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah. You'd have to know a lot. Like, they better get paid well. Yeah. Like, it seemed like you have to be pretty much a genius that can rebuttal against anybody. They can't make that. I mean, they don't make more than the president, so they can't make president doesn't probably make what that they're much. worth. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I would think that... 000, I think. I think it's four hundred. Is it? But I, I doubt that they make half that as yeah. a press secretary, you know. And they deserve every bit of. That. I mean, for what they're <laughs> defending, they have to know everything that's going on all at once and, how and have an answer for it. How ready. To answer like, it in the most politically correct, correct way. way. So if you slip up, those reporters are going to eat you on it. And yeah, that would just be. I, there was a TV show. Oh crap! With Kiefer Sutherland, where the designator survivor. You see that? Yeah. I saw like the first season after that. It was, wasn't as good, but the, the press secretary was, uh, on there and just watching him and how he did his stuff. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I would not want, that, not <laughs> want that job at all. You have to be on your toes. Nope. And you have to be, yeah. Nope. No, thank you. <laughs> so yeah. So what else is going on guys? Waiting for you to do an exhaust on a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well when you get yours we'll see whose is better <laughs> yours is because I'm not getting one <laughs> he says that now nope I'm not getting one you were saying that and then a couple days later you were looking at him you were telling me like oh I found one for 5500 on yeah I know so you're... <laughs> just like yours <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking at him I was. you're just trying to convince yourself well, it didn't help to see them or hearing and seeing a couple accidents all in the same week. It's like, uh, do I really want one now? That's going to happen. I mean, four in one week, that's a little excessive, I think. Whose fault was it, though? Because I don't know. One of them. Does it matter when you're the one that's on yeah. the motorcycle, though? Well, but if if you're if you're doing stupid shit on a motorcycle, like. I think two of them, they were just your risk, yes. cruising and they were on big Harleys. The one was kind of sketchy because it was on the highway. I saw the bike in between the two highways, and there was a police and a police dog out there sniffing, and there was another police car up a ways, and I was like, ooh, somebody did something wrong. Yeah. And then the other one, I guess the guy was just trying to get on the highway, and someone ran the red light. And ugh. Yeah, you got to really, when you're on a motorcycle, the most dangerous places are curves and intersections. Yeah. Is, yeah, and I, and like... They tell you to keep space. Like, like you're supposed to do that in the car anyway, but most people don't. Yeah. yeah. But in a bike, man, I find myself, even just riding around town, keeping a lot of room between me and the car in front of me. One, so then I could see farther ahead of them. But then if that guy slams on his brakes or something, and then, like, if I'm at a light, it turns green, I wait, and then I make sure I look before I start rolling through. Yeah. If I piss a guy off behind me, I don't care. I'm like, dude, if you get hit, it's going to hurt a hell of a lot less than if I get hit. Yep. You can stop pretty quick, but the last thing you want to do is lock up your brakes. Yeah, and I don't have ABS on mine. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Which isn't a big deal. Especially since I'm not going to be good. Like highway speeds and pump it right there. And honestly, <laughs> the cool thing about a bike is pressing that clutch clutch kills the power of the engine. You automatically yeah. start slowing down. So just do that. And what they taught us in an MFS course is just slowly grab that and then use your back brake at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Took that MSF course this weekend, and it was uh, very informative. But I took <laughs> def- Definitely, if, if you're uh, trying to learn to ride a bike or even maybe want to think about getting a bike, definitely take the MSF course. I took mine through the Harley dealership, but there's other programs that do it. A uh, local college here does it, too. I just happened to do it through Harley because that's where I bought the bike from. Uh, but it's really cool because it, I mean, they take you as if you've never been on a bike before and teach you, hey, this is, you sit in a classroom like the first night and they teach you all about motorcycles and motorcycle safety, what a clutch is, all the controls. And then the next day they take you out, fit you on a bike that's going to be right for you. And they're pretty much the smallest bikes that Harley makes. Uh, I don't know what they would give you through that college program. Probably a mixture of everything. Yeah, but they give you a pretty low-powered bike, and then they have limiters on it to where, one, it won't go over a certain speed, but then you can't just rev it, and then, like, it, it's a limiter on there. So if you do accidentally hit the throttle too much, it's going to not let you <laughs> run into a tree too hard. <laughs> so they definitely, and they have, like, crash bars set up and everything, and so they have, it's pretty safe. Because, you know, most people, it's going to take time to, to learn that. So, and then they get you comfortable. They sit you down on the bike, have you rock it back and forth, get comfortable with the weight of the bike because they are heavy. a lot more <laughs> heavier than, than an actual bicycle. And then they have you start it up, turn it off, do all the controls and everything. And then they have you uh, for a while there work the friction zone. So they have you release the clutch until the wheel starts to catch and you start going forward. They're like, all right, then you pull it back in. Roll back on your heels and just do that motion. So that way you know when, where the friction zone is. And that's where the power starts going to the wheel. And then from there to when you fully let it out. So then they have you bring it out. And then you kind of power walk across the parking lot a couple times, like in the friction zone. So have your feet down, just in the friction zone, not even fully in first gear. Have you turn around. And then just do that a bunch. And then they have you get back on the bike and like, all right, now put your feet up, get in the first gear, stop, turn around, just do that a bunch just to get a feel for it. And yeah, then they start doing the slow maneuvers, Hmm. which is pretty tricky (laughs) because you're a lot of the maneuvers, they just keep you in the friction zone. So you got to, instead of actually using the brakes, use the friction zone to give yourself power or not. You but give that's a little, the hardest to learn. It's good it that that's what they spend the time on. Yeah, it is. And just a little bit of throttle and then just work that friction zone and then really lean into the bike. And one thing that they kept stressing and not a lot of people were doing is when you do, especially like a U-turn or a sharp curve, to look like where you're going, like turn your head because then your body will follow that. So getting, learning that stuff and uh, going, my hardest part, just watching off YouTube videos and trying to teach myself was going from a complete stop up and going. So they get you really comfortable with that, which yeah. is nice. People stall bikes. Like I stalled mine a few times. A lot of people stalled theirs. There are other people that drop their bike quite a bit. <laughs> Luckily I never did that. Uh, you feel it and then you put your foot down and, <laughs> but there's some people that didn't get their foot down in time. <laughs> but like if you're on a motorcycle, if you're turning, like your handlebars are turned and you go to a complete stop, you're going to drop the bike. Like if you come to a complete stop on a motorcycle, you have to have your handlebars straight. straight. Yeah. Hmm. So they stress that, but, and, and the cool thing is you're using somebody else's bike. So if you drop it, not a big deal, <laughs> but they expect people to drop bikes and that's what the course is for. So that way you don't drop your own bike. You get comfortable with those slow maneuvers. Yeah. So the one I had trouble most with was the weaving in and out of the cones. Freaking that's tough to do slow. And they had you come out, you stopped, had to do a really tight uh, right turn into that and then come to another stop and then go into those. And I mean, they don't give you a whole lot of space in between the cones. So the first couple of times I like messed up and I'm like, screw this. And then I went back around and it's kind of like a, you have several different um, exercises in a loop that you just kind of do. 
And then so then I'd go on to the next one, then loop back around. And the more I came back to do it, I did better. But you really have to like use your hips to weave in and out of those. Like you don't turn your handlebars, you use your hips to freaking after that first day, man, my hips were killing me. <laughs> but it's really cool. Ended up everybody passed the course. So you generally unless you hit an instructor or run into a tree, they tell you you're gonna pass. <laughs> like in the like at the beginning, they're like, Oh, you don't you know, don't touch these lines, don't go outside of the lines, don't hit any cones. You know, most people still kind of touch the line or hit a couple cones. They don't really count that. As long as you can show that you can safely do that or have the concept, you're going to pass. And then if you really mess up, like one guy, there was like this big burly cop from uh, Topeka that was there, like big buff guy, had the hardest time with this throttle throttle like he would like rev it up really high and and then like a couple times the bike kind of got away from him but um he on the one test he was in his head and then he was going to do those and he got on the throttle and his bike was just getting away from him and they're like get back in line and we're gonna redo this again (laughs) so luckily with kansas they allow you to redo uh yeah like the that portion if you mess up you get get to redo it i've seen about the the worst version of that so I learned on my own from friends that own motorcycles. Um, <clears throat> me and uh, my buddy Darren growing up had a friend, Chris uh, Chris Mullen? Mueller. Mueller. I get the two mixed up. Not Mueller? <laughs> no, Mueller. but he went to high school with us, too. I think it was probably your year. But uh, he had a Ninja 250 and then like a 600 or something, and we got to ride both bikes and learn on that together. My buddy Darren bought a bike, and it was a Jixer 750 with a Power Commander on it way too much first bike right <laughs> and he i mean within weeks he was doing wheelies and shit and i'd already learned how to ride a bike so we're in a parking lot i'm like hey show me how to do wheelies and our friend tyler i think you know tyler Naughton from high school mm-hmm. yeah so he shows up and he sees me doing wheelies and he didn't even know i could ride a bike and he's like well this looks super easy <laughs> he's like let me try to ride your bike and he's in a cutoff shirt i, I wore jeans and i'm wearing a leather jacket in like august in case i fall doing wheelies right. and He's in like basketball shorts, cut off shirt, and, and uh, I think he had tennis shoes on. But I'm like, dude, you you're gonna want to go put jeans on and probably at least a, like a hoodie or something. Like, you've never rode a bike, and he's like, I'm just gonna go straight, stop, turn around. Like, he's like, I'm, <laughs> that's all that's gonna happen. And he'd never driven anything with a clutch at all, so didn't understand friction, didn't understand the clutch, <laughs> period. And I, I kept telling Darren, hey, this is a bad idea. Told Tyler, this is a bad idea, and those two are like. This is a great idea. I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm just going to stand here and watch. So the first two times, he kills it, and he's a really aggressive person. Like, especially in high school, he was even more so than now. So after it died on him twice, we're like, give it more throttle off. You know, you're just letting it die. You have to roll into the throttle. Well, he took that as, I'm just going to let it bounce off the rev limiter and dump the clutch, oh. and he cannot hear us. We are screaming at the top of our lungs, no, 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 let off, no. And he just dumps this clutch. This thing takes up in a wheelie. He gets to about maybe 50, 55 mile per hour, and it leans over on him. He spins flat on his stomach like oh. six times in a circle, and the bike goes off in the parking lot down into some woods and hits a tree and then falls over. Oh. And he completely like road rashed one nipple entirely off <laughs> and it grew back <laughs> but he like he stood up and he didn't have a nipple and i'm like oh my god like i told you and that was because he's wearing a fucking cutoff shirt and his knees were i mean completely oh. bloody like the worst thing you could wear for the first time <laughs> riding a bike like like until that grew back how painful Oh, that was, we went to a, another friend, so he didn't want to go home because he was scared to tell his parents that he even rode a motorcycle, and I'm like, my parents are immediately going to tell your parents. We had a, a friend, Ryan, that his mom was like, would let us get away with anything. We could have murdered somebody and gone back to their house, and she'd have been like, here's a Coke. Like, <laughs> so we're over there, and nobody wanted to pour the peroxide for him on his nipple, so Ryan's mom did it. I've never seen, I mean, every vein in Tyler's body, as he's just, like, screaming, and you see just, like, oh. you could see the pain as it hit him. Like, What's it look like under there? Is it just, like... <laughs> it was just flat and bloody. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that had to hurt literally until it grew back. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure it hurt the whole time of wearing a shirt period. Like, mm-hmm. and he did sports and stuff. So you'd be running and jogging and like weightlifting Sweat. and Ugh. yep. Mm-mm. Whose bike was it? Darren's. What happened to the bike? Was it 
Uh, he had frame sliders and stuff on it. It was all right. He had like a big, he had an actual like cage around it because he was learning how to stunt. So it was okay. Thank God. <laughs> right. He ended up totaling that bike. Uh, he he drove through a quick trip really fast and they had like one of those like medians that come out around the parking lot and he didn't know it was there. It was nighttime, didn't see it, wasn't painted yellow. And he hit so hard it pushed the forks like out of themselves and bent the whole front wheel and Ooh. he ended up buying a Jixer 1000 after that. <laughs> And then he totaled that by running out of gas at 196 mile an hour. God. And push rods and stuff. Yeah. And one thing that they stress is gear. Like it, (laughs) is it comfortable to wear? Is it? No. But it's going to be that one time that you don't wear it. The cheap stuff too. He fell off once with cheap, one of the like the cheap starter jackets that you get and they're like nylon mesh. Mm Mm-hmm. When he fell off, he skinned his elbow and it melted the nylon into his elbow. Did he have one so with pads? It, it did, but oh, it was outside of the pad, so like basically below the pad ripped through. And then when he pulled the jacket off, some of the jacket stayed in his arm, and he had to pick pieces of nylon out of his arm oh, after damn. major road rash. And he was black, so it looked gnarly when he would get because I mean he would just be like pink on his arm for like six months. Like, yeah, one one that's not where you want to go cheap is on your safety gear yeah he learned that one after that (laughs) (laughs) yeah the best one is a leather jacket is it the best and the most comfortable in the summertime no but if that happens (laughs) yeah you'd rather have that yeah i'll just stick to cars it's funny like i'll see like i'll (laughs) see people on sport bikes wearing literally shorts some of people don't even wear short shirts like it's like and no helmets i'm like yeah and those are the bikes that are there was a, a video of darren he wore nothing but a tube sock. I'll let you imagine where he wore the tube sock. And he rode a wheelie from Independence through downtown Kansas City, Missouri, and then back into Independence. Jeez. <laughs> he was part of a stunt club, wasn't he? Yeah, Block Stars. He was a, one of the original three that started it. They're still around in Kansas City. I'm going to keep my two wheels on the ground. Like I I'm, think the Harley was a good choice over yeah. a sport bike, especially for a beat. Like you're not going to be tempted to go and learn how to stunt what on I have, a Harley I, or anything. I have so. no no desire to do any stunts or anything. Like I just want to. It's fun to just cruise around. Yeah, it's freeing to be on two wheels. But yeah. my my limit is now after Darren passed away on a bike, and for me after that, I'm I'm done. It doesn't. I've had them in the past. I had a, a ZX nine R that would do a hundred in first gear, and yeah, I'm I'm cool doing. 50 around the city. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm good with that. I, I don't want to pay the insurance on it, too. My wife, when we got that those mopeds, she was, like, week one, she's like, why don't we just get a bike? She said, we can go further. We could go check out, like, further parks and different stuff because she was really enjoying just riding on the back of the one we had. And I thought about it. I'm like, I don't want to pay property tax on this and insurance, and I have to go get a insurance license. Insurance is, now that we're our <clears> age, <laughs> it was with, with full, like, top-tier insurance, it was, like, 300 bucks for a year. That's not bad. No. On a brand new bike, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, when I, I checked when I was 18. Oh, I was, yeah. was going to put, I didn't buy it, but I was ready to put uh, a new uh, 600 Ninja on two credit cards because it wouldn't fit on one, which was a great <laughs> idea at 19% interest. And then I called about the insurance, which thank God, like that's what set, stopped me, which you'd think two credit cards would stop you, but no. And, uh, the insurance was more than the payment. The payment was like three something a month. The insurance was like almost four hundred a month for liability is what they Jeez. wanted. But I granted at eighteen I had twelve speeding tickets. Yeah. So that didn't help either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't get speeding tickets on a bike though. Yeah. But at eighteen I'm not affording <laughs> six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Just that's for true. a luxury. I already had a three hundred dollar car payment or more for the Trans Am, so nice. Yep. I'm just gonna cruise around. I like You'll cruise know. around, I'll be in my car, and I'll cruise with you. <laughs> Just don't <Yeah>. hit me. <laughs> oh, I won't. I'll stay back. I'll let you lead. <laughs> <laughs> or, but, but or that's the thing, too. We could all meet up at, like, a Cars and Coffee, and, like, it doesn't matter what you show up on. Yep. Everybody's interested in it, you know. I could let you ride the scooter. I'm not riding the scooter. <laughs> Why? It's fun. He rides it. He's got uh, the same one, just a different color, right? Yep. I have an all-black one and then a black and white one. I don't need one. We're not talking about need here. See, but we live in a better area. Like, I'm not going to get caught like you are. Well, I only got caught because I went to a stupid park. Yeah, but okay. By better area, I mean not as nice of an area, but less likely. Like, if I go, 
I live right on Johnson Drive. So if I go south, it's a bad idea because it's Shawnee, Overland mm-hmm. Park, Lenexa immediately. But if I go towards, you know, KCK, I'm not getting pulled over. No one cares. As soon as I'm in KCK, I'm worry free. They, they don't care <laughs> about a moped. They have way bigger issues yep. than me. Now, I care more about like, Maybe I don't want to be out here after 9 or 10 p.m. <laughs> but Or get off the bike and go into the store and come out and it's yeah, gone. I take the keys with me. I could put the lock on it, but I also carry. But I'm not going to shoot. I mean, it's a. I have $300 in one and 80 in another. I'd, yeah, if you're going to take it, it, I'm not, yeah, I'm not <laughs> getting in trouble over that. Yeah. Mine's out in the shed right now just because, I don't know. I can't decide if I want to keep it or sell it. Like, it's still fun to ride. Yeah. Right now, I prefer the motorcycle, but I don't have any storage. Like, I don't have any saddlebags or anything like that. At least on the moped, you have, the seat lifts up. You can yeah. fit a bottle of booze in there or something. Um, it depends on what you get into, too. Like, if we go to the lake, I could see taking them. That's why I keep them around. And when we do, like, car show stuff, like, I like to do this event in Omaha called the Ice Cream Cruise. And I put my car in the car show, so we we would have to we would take my truck, trailer the car, but then we drive the car from the hotel to the car show. But while your car is in the car show all day, you have no way to get around, and it's it's such a huge. I mean, it's a mile of cars lined up. So if you want to go get concessions, it's like okay, we'll be back in forty five minutes by the time we walk to the concession stands, and then get back to check on if we had a moped. You know, it fits on the trailer sideways. That's what. That's oh, what yeah. I, I want to keep it around for stuff like that, even though I can't register it. Same problem that you had. We can, but it's we'd have to do a. You're gonna have a lot of effort in it. Paperwork. Yeah. Have to file. What, what did he say? It was a um, to get a quiet title, you have to like go through the court and. The problem too is if they find out that it's not a 49 cc motor. Then it gets titled as a motorcycle, which is which would honestly be fine for me since I have or will here shortly have my motorcycle license. So yeah, that's not it just deal. would increase the insurance, and you have to have a motorcycle license is the thing, which not a big deal if you already have a motorcycle license. Would I have to get insurance on it though? You think? Yeah, I would. Forty nine cc, you don't, but over forty nine cc, it becomes a motorcycle. You have to have, so you just have to register a forty nine cc, and that's it, and you're right. done, and have a driver's license. As long as you have those covered, your car insurance is what carries the motorcycle or the moped. But anything over that is considered a motorcycle and needs to have its own insurance. But also, I mean, you're probably talking about 40, 50 bucks a year for full coverage as a moped and probably 100 as a motorcycle because it's still a moped. I mean, if they totals out, your deductible is $1,000 and they're paying you two. Right. Like they're really <laughs> hurting there. Like, yeah, I had the um, Highway Patrol inspector officers come over to look at it to see if they could put a VIN number on it or anything. And they didn't mention they like, they looked at it and was like, yeah, it was like, like a moped or whatever. And they didn't ask about what size engine or anything like that. They tried to look it up. Obviously you can't find anything online no. about it because they're, they're out of business, but I'm like, man, just freaking slap a VIN number on there. Come on. But nope. They came back and said I had to actually have a title for it and to get one. It's like, you have to go through the court system May or may not have to get an attorney, so it's like, well, shit, more money and time that you then don't it's waste. worth. Yeah. It's like, and like you said, probably sell it for what a thousand bucks as without is. a title, yeah, and it's probably worth maybe two eighteen hundred to twenty two hundred because it's got like title. I think mine's got three hundred and some miles. You on had it. the lowest mile one, yeah. Although the front fender's fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Yep. You had the only one with the working gas gauge, and then the last time we rode ours, the mine, the gas gauge, just by the end of the ride. And uh, mine doesn't work. Like, it'll say full, and then all of a sudden it's empty. Okay. There's so no in-between. the same problem I do then. Yeah, no in-between. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, like, it's full all the time, and then all of a sudden, empty. Well, they sat unused for three years or something. Yeah. So. Did you pull your air intake off? Air on cleaner the, off? On not the one. I need to on the one that I bought with you. Yes. I took everything apart on my first one because I've had it for so long. I had to replace the the clutch in it, which it's like a centrifugal clutch, but it it broke. I don't I don't have a Kickstarter on it. It broke my Kickstarter off from it hmm. internally malfunctioning. But I haven't taken apart the new one. I, all I did was the carburetors, got them running and figured it was fine. I never looked in the airbox. I never thought it'd be full of shit and then 
you told me yours was. So now I probably yeah. do. Yeah. So when I was writing, somehow the gas or not the oil cap came off, but it stayed on. But it was spewing oil, and I had no idea. And then I st- stopped at a stoplight, and I'm like, I start smelling this burning smell. I'm like, what the hell? And I look this way, and there's just all this white smoke coming. I'm like, motherfucker. So luckily, I was at this point close to home, but I'm like, I've been out for probably 30 to 45 minutes right. Like, how long has this been going on for? Got home, and it, it, was, it was empty almost. <laughs> and then it just oil is just dripping all over the place. So I ended up having to take the whole, like, all the plastic yeah. parts and stuff off, which isn't hard, but it's still a pain in the ass because you got to be careful not to break the tabs yep. and everything. So I got all that stuff off, got everything cleaned up, and then I'm like, oh, I might as well take you know, the this air box off and took it off. All this bird seed fell out. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah, this is not I normal. Probably, like, next, sometime that I'm, when I'm over and it's light out, we should probably run it and see if I need to adjust your carb again. Cause... Sometimes when I'm at a... Stoplight just sitting there. It, it wants to die unless I sit there and rev the engine. Yeah. And then I can that, adjust that stuff pretty easily. That, but I think that now that you have more air coming in, that's going to throw off. That might be why my wife thinks it smells like gas when it's parked in the... You think that could be a... Because she's like, if it's parked in the garage, she's like, it makes it smell like gas in there. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Mine don't do that. But I can... There's a little drain to the carburetor, too. We can make sure it's closed, but... It was when, when I brought it over. I know. Yeah, so I haven't just noticed with everything. I haven't noticed anything leaking, but <laughs> I, I did notice a couple of times. I'm like, yeah, it does smell kind of like gas in here. And now that that's out of there, it. I mean, and some gas does just sit in the carburetor bowl. I mean, a decent amount that you know it, it'll evaporate over time, and you'll smell it. So that could be it too. They came with these racing air filters for them, the carburetors. But I talked to a friend about it, and. Basically, there's a way that oil gets pulled out of the motor and back in recirculated like an EGR on a car, kind of, but like a really primitive version of it. And if I put those air filters on, I negated that whole system. I don't know that the motor would be properly oiled, like the crankcase stuff. It wouldn't be venting, which isn't good. So I didn't put the performance air filters on because... When I talked to a buddy about it, he's like, he's like, what are you going to gain? A quarter of a horsepower? <laughs> right. He's like, just, just leave it the way it is. I'm like, yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it gets up and goes just fine i think i've gotten it up to like 50 55 maybe yeah it's a little I've sketchy had, i've had one of ours up to 60 one is significantly faster than the other which is the one i consider my wife's i let her ride it because i'm balls out on the thing all the time because it, i mean it's pretty damn slow <laughs> mm-hmm. but she isn't and hers i know she's only like you know maybe half to three quarter throttle and i am trying to keep up with her and cannot keep up with her at all and like sure she weighs less than me but it's not just that because when we <laughs> flip-flop like i am just gone <laughs> and she's like where what are you doing she's like you're a mile ahead of me I'm like, I, I don't know i didn't look back <laughs> i wonder where we should go on a group ride on our mopeds <laughs> yeah that'd be fun see how how mine stacks up. is marie comfortable on the moped will she ride it just dismount so i took her up to the school over here and was having her the problem with her is when she's sitting on it she can't touch the ground with her legs and so she's either like really tippy toed and she has a hard time getting up and going because she's got to like try and lift her legs up and in and it's very difficult for her because she's got short legs so it doesn't fit her well yeah once she's up and going driving around she's fine and she was fine at the school, and then she wanted to drive it around the neighborhood, and she did fine until she came to a stop. I'm like, are you done? She's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Turn it off, put this kickstand down, and just leave it there. In the process of her swinging her leg over, and then it's really hard to find the kickstand on those. Yeah. She didn't know where it was, and then somewhere in between her trying to find it, and she didn't have her hand on the brake. I think that was a problem, too. Uh, it tipped over on her. And the that's happened in Natalie too. She's the kick, over with it the Kickstarter part landed on her ankle, so both sides of her ankle were fucked up for a while. <laughs> so she hasn't gotten back on it since. That yeah, that'll turn you off from it. She says she wants to, but that's kind of why I'm keeping it too, is in case she does want to try it again. But yeah, go right yeah, around here. That, I'm like, together. if you're gonna drop it, this is that was the perfect way to drop it. Like at least you weren't going. <laughs> like <laughs> if you're gonna drop it, drop it still. <laughs> so, and she actually handled it pretty well i was expecting her to like get all pissed off and like 
pull up Marie. She gets frustrated very easily. <laughs> so I thought she was just going to like freak out. And she handled it pretty well. I'm surprised. I've heard about it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm like, hey. Yeah. So she's too short for it, I think. I don't know how short your wife is, but. Not it. Yeah. She's taller than Marie. Yeah. But so she could learn how to like. With her feet, you know, stand up and then step off of it and just stand. Because at least with the moped, it has that empty area where she could stand over it and hold it easier. But she's going to have to get used to, like, going and yeah, hop. it's still going to be a little freaky. That's the one thing I hate about the mopeds versus the motorcycle is put your feet down on the motorcycle and you just literally lift them up on the pegs. The moped, you got to, like, pick them up and then move your feet inside. Kind of a... Yeah. It's awkward until you get used to it. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. But... You don't have to worry about shifting or anything. And <laughs> they have like a centrifugal transmission, from what I understand, in them with the clutch part. Like it actually is like cone shaped and will increase your hmm. gearing over time as it increases speed. Kind of like those ones that they had in the Ultimas for a while. Kind of like a real primitive version of that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I had one of those and it was really weird. Like you're sitting there waiting for it to shift and <laughs> nothing happens. Yeah. Like, that's uh, why you don't feel it shift, but it says it has a transmission in it. Mm-hmm. When I looked it up with all the how to put the clutch in it and everything, it, nice. And it's like a cone shaped gear with a belt on it that moves as you increase speed. Hmm. Does yours make a lot of noise when you're braking? Yeah, both of them do. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and yours did too. The rear brake specifically makes a lot of noise. I'm like, is this normal? This, this is where I'm like going really fast and I hit the brakes. I'm like, this is sketchy as fuck. Yeah. And now <laughs> I think if we bought nicer brake pads, because I had that. I had a four-wheeler that sounded like that, and then I bought carbon fiber brake pads, which they were like a $7 upgrade from, you know, factory brake pads, and they quit making that noise on the four-wheeler, so. You can meet up on your bicycle. <laughs> I'll just do the car. <laughs> Are we going to have to tow you? Nope. Sure? Yep. Been driving around the neighborhood. I think I got some bad gas in it. Got to fix that. Yeah, I don't want to because I got to drain the fucking tank. <laughs> Where am I going to put all that fuel? I, how how much fuel do you think you got in it? Half a tank, so Oof, that's quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, eight gallons. I think there's some water in it. I put a bunch of that heat shit in it, trying to get it because it's been sitting for four years, and then yeah, I put five gallons of ninety three in it. And it helped a little bit, but I still can smell bad gas. So. I get um, that when I eat chili. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think it, it's uh, just bad It's gas. actually safer. F- now, as long as the EPA isn't listening, it's safer <laughs> for you and works better than your average weed killer. <laughs> I will say that. Yeah. So I've had a buddy that he owns a, an automotive shop, and he's been, he was paying, you know, a bunch of money on weed killer because he has all this gravel and... He's like, I just started using bad gas, and he's like, it works phenomenally better, especially diesel. <laughs> oh diesel yeah, does yeah, great. Yeah, but nobody's throwing diesel away. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it doesn't go bad as easily. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think it's just bad fuel because every once in a while I can get, I can smell it in the exhaust. But four years is a long time. Yeah, but throwing heat in it, I've tried putting ninety three in it every time I get a chance, and if heat doesn't booster, do it, I don't think you got much of a, a yeah. chance. I think I just still... need, to, I just need to drain the tank. I've replaced the fuel filter on it, and. It, It'll It'll be run fine. some Lucas through it too, or something. Yeah. So, can you can you take it to a shop and have them drain it and dispose of that, or you yeah. could, yeah, or you could probably take it in like to a place that recycles oil and have them, yeah, mix it with oil and, you know, next time you do an oil change, mix it all with oil and say I got a bunch of oil saved up. Yeah, it's like what with, I usually do with antifreeze too. Yeah, with all like my mowers and and small engine stuff, salt and gas, I'll siphon it out into like a, just a five gallon gas tank or yeah. gas can, and then. Take that to the hazardous disposal in Olathe. Yeah, yeah. We, when I worked at shops, they would all they would just recycle it all as oil. That we'd have big, you know, containers that would eventually go out to an oil vat, and yep. it didn't matter what fluid it was, just put it in that thing. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Through that, I'll just let it go down the driveway, light it on fire, and clean the driveway that way. <laughs> Get some styrofoam <laughs> and make napalm. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Get that on video. Yeah. It sucks when you were telling that motorcycle story about Tyler. That was before we had good phones with cameras. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> imagine yeah. if we had cameras back then. We would have gotten so much good shit on there. Yep. Go, good GoPros and all that. I think at that time I probably had a Razor. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Him get my uh, Mercury Topaz up on three wheels. Yeah. Two two wheels, I think. Probably. 
I know I had Jacob Ollard's cars on two wheels. I'm 100% certain of that. His Dodge Spirit, I had that thing on two wheels multiple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, the cars that we had, we... <laughs> I, could, I didn't even on. have a license then. I was 14. Nice. Yeah. The first time I street raced was in... It was in your mom's car. It was in your mom's Toyota Camry against uh, Rebecca from Bandcamp. Oh, yeah. And her... We were at a party. Neon. And that's what I cared more about than drinking was like, who wants to get into a street race right now? <laughs> who will let me borrow their car? <laughs> I know. That, like, when I first started driving, like, that's all I wanted to do is race and, yeah. like, yep. do donuts and do a bunch of stupid shit. Oh, one that's... of my favorite memories ever in a car is with you. I don't know if you remember this or not. We were out in your mom's car. You're driving. And there was a Porsche Boxster, like, a lane over from us. And I'm like, oh, smoke him off the line. I'm like, he's not going to even know we're racing. We're in a Camry. you know, it's not Corolla. Gonna yeah, yeah. 93 Corolla. Yeah. And you floored it off the line. And this guy doesn't know we're racing. And he beat us by, like, three cars. And he's not <laughs> trying. Like, there's no <laughs> noise coming from the Porsche. He's not accelerating hard. And we're going as hard as we can. And he's just, like, slowly blowing by <laughs> us. I remember doing a donut in that car. And I did it so hard, I guess, that it disconnected the battery and the whole thing just died. I'm like freaking out because it's my mom's car. I'm like, I'm going to be in so much trouble. But just had to re-tighten the, the connection of the battery. You're like, son of a bitch. Your Topaz, though, we were in the snow and you slid into that curb. And here's what pisses me off about that is we were, yes, we were on our way to do donuts, right? We were on our way to do stupid shit in a parking lot, but... The very first turn into the parking lot. Yeah, I slid on some ice going into this parking lot and then couldn't stop because it's ice and I was stupid and turned my wheel. It was front wheel drive too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably. And then that wheel. Yeah, it was because it, it was your front wheel that hit and it pushed the axle into the transmission. Yeah, because it hit so, yeah, one of those yeah. like four inch, four to six inch curves. Oh, it was a huge curve. It was, it was, yeah, it was the farmer's market. And I think I was going about 25 miles an hour yeah. and hitting that sideways like that. Jammed the axle into the transmission, bent the wheel, and all this other stuff. Now, they did say it had a bent frame. I think that might be on me. It, Me or the <laughs> previous owner, that was my buddy, too, that I bought, a, I bought that car. Well, I mean, I did bucks. get it on three, maybe two wheels. That might have been the frame bending, but yeah. that, that would not have fixed the transmission, which but was we, a bigger <laughs> issue. As much as that sucked, I did a couple donuts, and then... Throw it home, and literally, you're it's bouncing up and down like you could tell. I'm like, shit, something's fucked up because <laughs> this is not a smooth ride. Well, then my mom, I told her something was wrong with the car. <laughs> she's like, why aren't you driving it? Why aren't you driving it? I had to have Jacob come pick me up, and she's like, why is Jacob picking you up? I'm like, ah, something's wrong with the car. I don't feel safe. <laughs> so she thought she would be nice and take it into the shop and get it fixed. The stupid mechanic at the shop was like, oh, in order for this to happen, what was going on? He would have had to be doing donuts at high speeds in reverse. <laughs> I'm like, you I'm like, first of all, I wasn't even doing donuts in it. Like <laughs> no. they my parents did I got grounded for that because the car was totaled at that point. So because of that guy, I said I would have been yeah, doing donuts. I remember that. I'm like, dude, I wasn't. I, <laughs> I promise I was going to do donuts, but I wasn't. And I still got grounded. I'm like, and they never believed me. Like they thought I did, was Doing it, doing you, it. You should explain to your dad at least at this point that wasn't what happened. I right. should believe you now. I'm like, <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> Ruined my summer. <laughs> yeah, I remember they donated it to like a charity that took free cars. I donated a lot of cars to charity. <laughs> <laughs> Stories like that. Back to Tyler Naughton. He had a, a Hyundai Elantra. Um, and he neutral dropped the hell out of this thing all the time and eventually blew the transmission out of it. And the elementary school we grew up from was, I mean, it was two blocks down one road and like one turn away from his house. And that's where he made it. And he just, it had to make it six hours overnight before it got towed to a transmission shop. And some kids came by and beat every window and panel out of the thing till it was totaled. Oh. It's like, it was like a 40,000 mile Elantra. <laughs> Damn. Couldn't couldn't last six hours overnight. <laughs> yeah. Do you donate any cars that stopped working on you for whatever reason? Nope. I still got my first car. That's impressive. I've been looking <laughs> for mine for years. A lot of my first cars I've are blowing some motors out of it. Junkyard. But that's about it. 
I mean, I had a really nice 86, 86 or 89 F-150. I remember that. Yeah. Freaking awesome. Had an inline six engine, two gas tanks, single cab, but long bed. Had the really cool camber shell on it. Freaking awesome. Some asshole. I had it parked. Did a hit and run in the snow, and he just hit my wheel. Freaking broke everything underneath it and totaled it. Yep. Yeah. My first truck was like that, too. It was a short bed, standard cab short bed. Yeah, the black one. Yeah, but it had two gas tanks like that, and it was the inline six. That was... I did not appreciate that truck for what it was at the time. I wish I still had to complain about fuck gas mileage. Fuck gas. This is so expensive because you were in college at the time. I was in high school at that time. Yeah, well, college you were bitching about. College is when I got the 96 F-150. That one was a V8 and had the two gas tanks. Yeah, I bought another one later, too. I bought a a five-speed manual V8 as my daily driver when I had the Trans Am. It was the first daily driver. I finally had 2500 bucks to not spend on the Trans Am and... Bought one of those, and as soon as I sold it, the day I sold it, a, a friend of my neighbor bought it, and he came back like two weeks later, and he's like, "Well, I blew the head gasket, or the head gasket blew in the thing, which it it didn't. I I checked the oil when he came, and it didn't have coolant oil. And he comes back, and it's like green and bubbly. I'm like, yeah, you definitely blew the head gasket. I'm like, but you checked the oil in front of me before you left, and it like, you know what I mean? I gave him like I think four hundred bucks back or something. I'm like, but this isn't my fault. Like, you blew the head gasket in two weeks. I'm like, how do I know you didn't go around the corner and dump the clutch and drive the thing like, yeah. you know, as hard as you can? Like, I don't know what happened, you know? Mm-hmm. I liked the, the one I had in college. I really liked 96 Eddie Bauer edition V8. Uh, short, I think I had a short bed. Uh, extended cap, though. Leather seats. Radar detector in there. Didn't always work. But, yeah, being in college, having to drive back and forth to Kansas City, gas mileage sucked. Oh, yeah. And if you, I think I averaged... <clears throat> 15 yeah and as a college kid that sucks <laughs> i drove down the, the trans am several times in pit to see you mm-hmm. i like that truck but man it just went downhill were you in the car when joe rear ended that person on broadway Mm-mm. oh <laughs> there's like three or four of us we're literally sitting in traffic on broadway at a light he's not paying attention jamming to music just right in the back of this old man's freaking <laughs> buick and I was like, oh, my God, Joe, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, we're not even drinking yet. You're- <laughs> <laughs> Thank Good God. Thing. Yeah. yeah. And the guy gets out and he goes, oh, that looks all right. And Joe, now he's a smooth talker. It's like, well, I can buff it out right now. I can get it out. See you. I was like, oh, it's fine. And I was like, gets back in the car. We start going. I was like, Lucky. you guys going to exchange insurance or anything? No, he says we're fine. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I was like, you lucky motherfucker. I think as an old man living in that town, you've yeah, kind of. But I was just like, God dang. And there was another time he rear-ended <laughs> our buddy's M3. He was in his Cadillac at that time, the 77 Cadillac DeVille. <laughs> and our other buddy was driving the M3. He was, didn't quite understand manual quite yet. And they were on a hill, and he rolled back and stalled it, and the Cadillac hit it, <laughs> bent the exhaust, so bad that went up and bent the valves oh on the my head, God. replaced the bumper, and all he did to his license plate frame was just go, there, it's fixed. Yeah, probably did <laughs> zero Cadillac, damage to the, on the Cadillac. Cadillac. And I was just like, oh, my God, you hit the M3, you're fucked. <laughs> they made cars so much better back then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally different materials. Yeah, but... But I still like that era of, like, late 90s, early 2000 cars, even though, like, there couldn't be more plastic anything in the world, but... Yeah, the one time I got in my accident was actually Cat got in an accident the week before. So I was driving around Pitt, and I was going to work. I had, was getting ready to turn left, and it's a three-way stop. I had the right-of-way, and this lady just ran the stop sign, and I just looked over and saw a car at my door. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to hurt. And I remember dumping the clutch, and I got enough, and she just barely tapped the rear end. And then she tried to blame me. Oh, your blinker wasn't on. I was like, bitch, it's stuck on. And the cop's like, yeah, it is stuck on. <laughs> She's like, well, it's not my fault. He goes, yeah, it is. Stop, stop, stop. He didn't have a stop at all. It's your fault. And I was just like, fuck. That sucks. I was so pissed. Because then I went without a car for like a week or two. Ah, <laughs> oh, good old days. <laughs> Got a buddy back in college that uh, he got hit in his car. Not his fault. He had a roommate that traveled. He was on a cat team, 
and uh, for being as young as he was, he had a nice diesel truck because he had decent money and had a three roommate situation. <laughs> so his buddy that he lived with said, hey, just drive my truck while I'm out of town. He's like, I'd rather it be driven. He's like, I'm not going to be home for a month anyway, so drive it for the week. No big deal. He goes to Subway. While he's inside, he watches someone back into the – he's not even in the truck <laughs> and backs into his buddy's truck. So it goes into the shop. They you have a close family friend that's like, hey, we have an extra van. Take the van, no problem, till your car gets back. Your roommate's car is in the shop. Has the van for like a day, and someone rear ends the van at a stoplight. And he's like, I'm done. I'm not driving until I get my car back. Like, I give up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That, and then last year I got hit in the truck. So that stops light, I'm just waiting. Bam, get hit. And I was like, what the fuck? It's going to get yep. a bit birthday cake for Ryder. <laughs> Old guy's like, I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh, obvious. I was at a dead stop. <laughs> Fuck. So on a motorcycle, you're supposed to stay, like, on either side of the lane and, like, in first gear until the person behind you stops. Because otherwise, if you're looking and that guy's not stopping, just get over. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. whoever's in front of you is kind of screwed. But Yeah, I was so pissed when he hit the truck because I only had, like, maybe 2,000 miles on it. I was fucking pissed. It's the least, though. Yeah, but I was fucking pissed. So they're just waiting at the stop site, and bam, I was like, what in the fuck? I, I literally said, what the fuck, when I got out of the truck. Real so I wonder off. if this is going to have to be an explicit episode. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you two asked, and I'm like, every time I say no, and I haven't gotten any slack back yet, so. Yeah. Just not made for kids. Yep. Not made <laughs> for kids. Last time I was in an accident, it ended up being really crazy. So it was probably 2016, and I was in I had a, a standard cab, long bed, uh, six liter, 2500, like newer body style GMC. <clears throat> and I'm headed home from work, and there's this guy in an older, like the F 150s, like we've been talking about. And he keeps passing people, and I'm just doing this like five over. And all of a sudden, I'm in front of him again, and he passes people, and then I'm in front of him again, and he's driving like an asshole, but he's not getting anywhere. So eventually, there's three of us driving almost the same speed, and I, I have cruise control on. I'm just sitting there with cruise control on. And he wants to get around me, and he keeps just, like, coming up behind me. I'm like, fuck this. Like, take cruise control off. I'm just going to sit here right at the same speed of the guy next to me, and he can eat it till I get to my exit. I'm in the <laughs> slow lane, and he's doing this to me. It's like there's two people that, yeah. that are supposed to be going fast. They're, they're the problem, not me. I'm in the slow lane doing five over. Like, leave me alone. So we get to 75th Street where I'm getting off at, and there's these tunnels that go, like, about 87th Street. He tries to pass me in that tunnel, and there's not enough room for two trucks to fit in there. So he completely clips my whole front end. So now I'm like, okay, like we're in an accident. I get on the phone with 911, and he just starts pulling away from me. I'm like, I, I literally dropped the phone, can't find my phone. It fell in between my seat. It's on the, this dialing 911, but I can't grab it. <laughs> and I'm chasing this guy. Well, he runs out of gear before I do because I'm in a way newer truck. So I'm just following him until we get to where he's going. He drives through and gets off, gets over to a Walmart and drives right to a cop, gets out of his truck and tells the cop, hey, this guy pulled a gun on me on the highway. <laughs> and I pull up to this. I have no idea what's going on other than this guy just hit me and I'm livid. And luckily I wasn't. I, ha I had my Glock 17 that I would regularly carry, but I didn't bring it with me that day. So thank God for that. <laughs> right. Get out of the car and the cop pulls a gun on me and has me get on the ground. And I'm like, what? What is what, what happened here? Happen? Like, <laughs> I'm the victim of a crime and now you're putting me on the ground. He searches my whole truck, doesn't find a gun. And he's like, what is going on? I'm like, he hit the front of my truck. And then they did a whole police investigation through Merriam. And they decided this is the highway patrol's problem. And then <laughs> put it on the highway patrol. The only thing that saved me was when highway patrol showed up. My direct supervisor at that time where I was building cop cars was like a way high up highway <laughs> patrol guy. And I'm like, yeah, do you know Jim so-and-so? And they're like, oh, yeah, he's my direct supervisor. I'm like, yeah, he's he's mine too. And they're like, oh, we'll get you out of here, no problem. <laughs> nice. And then we, I, I got the ticket later and I looked up the guy off of his name online just to see like what other violations. He came up on a website. First, first thing that came up datingpsychos.com there was four <laughs> women on there looking for him for crimes he committed against them oh, while Jesus. dating them like he helped my parents do something and ripped them off while you know saying he was a contractor or he we lived together and he like defaulted on a lease and like <laughs> it, it's like how did four women on a, a random website i've never even heard of find this guy it's like yeah he 
I, thank God I didn't get into it. Like, thank God there was a cop there. Who knows what he would have done if we met on a side street? Like, <laughs> oh, man. Or no. He oh, and his mom days. was there in minutes. I mean, his mom was there like like on call, like, oh, this is typical. Like, because they kept his truck. They didn't, he, he had a suspended, he had no license. It was taken away from him. So they took, they impounded the truck and a bunch of stuff on his end because he wasn't <laughs> even supposed to be in a vehicle. He had multiple DUIs. Had, and he's like 38 at the time Jeez. or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was very interesting. <laughs> nice. So, Topkin 2. Really good. Have you not seen it? I haven't seen it yet. What do oh you think God. of it? Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Best sequel I've seen in a very, very long time. <laughs> really good. I even went to Target. I'm, to I'm disappointed you didn't see it in theaters. I, I think you still can. <laughs> I think you still could see it. I think it's still... We could, a, yeah. I don't know. I thought about it, but then just never got around to it. It was... The sound on those movies is just excellent. Worth seeing in theaters. I keep seeing clips. I'm like, I cannot watch this. I cannot. Do you watch have this. Amazon Prime, right? Yes, I video, do. Video, Amazon Video. It's five ninety nine. Have uh, you paid for it? Just let them use yours. I rented it. It's only good for oh, forty eight hours, it. right? Yeah. That's dumb. I'd rather just buy it and own it. I'm paying for a bike now, so I got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it was. You paid five ninety nine. I actually watch watched it, it like twice. I watched it the night that. What was it? Whatever night she was working, Saturday night. Yeah, and then I watch it Sunday night too. It's, it's cool because that how it goes back to the first one, like they do flashbacks and everything. Yeah. But then they also bring back like Val Kilmer's back in it briefly. I wonder who did his voice because obviously he's got the um, voice box. Did you see that documentary on him on is it Netflix or Amazon too? Amazon's he, got it. He's got a voice box, so oh, that, I didn't know that. That What's wasn't that? him actually talking. They did a good job of that then. Yeah. I, I would have never thought that. I never yeah. knew that. He's got yeah, because he's throat got throat cancer, I think. Yeah, throat cancer. And so he's got that thing that he has to talk through. So they edited that well, but I'm surprised they killed him off. Or what? Not. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. He's it. He's only in it briefly, but mm. you need to watch it then. I know. I went to Target hoping it had already been out on DVD since like. Everything else was it's been out around that same time and it's not. That girl, the bartender, yeah, was she in the first one? I don't think, I don't think it was the same actress. I think she was meant to be the other girl. Gotcha. Because the yeah, instructor or whatever. Yeah, I forgot what her name is in real life. She looks like Demi Moore, but isn't Demi Moore? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's not the same actress. Yeah, the the actual the blonde chick did not age well. Yeah. <laughs> She was hot back then in the 80s, but now she didn't age well. But they had the really cool throwbacks were like the bike and the mm-hmm. Porsche, like that they still had around. Like they still had the, all the original vehicles from the movie. The old school Porsche boxer that she drove and everything. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, they did a throwback to that. And it's the same house that he met her in before, like the beach house that he jumps out of the window again. But she's a, I, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but. Gosh. She, they, there's a lot of really good throwbacks and a lot of really good lines. Hmm. Obviously, the main song is the same as the original one at the beginning. Yeah. Hmm. They're able to do all like any of the like stuff you would want to see from Goose that they can't do. Like they make all that happen. It's there. It like everything that you'd think like they couldn't do that again. Oh, they did it. Hmm. Yep. Dang. And Miles Teller plays his son. Uh, Goose's son. Yeah, I know yeah. that. Just from it, and it actually did like did a pretty good. I mean, they. Oh yeah, yeah. Look pretty I've similar. Heard, I've heard stories of how hard their training was because of Tom Cruise for this movie. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, ah. Well, because when they're in the jets and it's on them, like they they have to act like they're actually. Pulling it's hard G's to act. And all that. Yeah, pulling G's. I mean, that's kind of really hard to act until you actually feel what pulling that many G's is like and. They did a pretty good job. I can't imagine what that costs to get the military on board with that. Like, sure, it's like a free advertisement for them, but I think they're way past, like, yeah, this is a free advertisement, but we would also take several yeah. million dollars to do this. Cause I think when they did the first one, I read that they only allowed them to do two missile launches. Yeah, and they used that for every missile yep. launch in the entire... And they had to use it from, like, different angles and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it was crazy. Hmm. Gonna make me go rent it tonight and stay up late. Those Gen Five jets are those like a real thing or is that just made up? No, it's real. Is it? Yeah, 
Who's got those? I was in China because China cop like doesn't follow copyright laws, and they downloaded what we did and copied our plane. Nice. So we got the and China. <laughs> I wonder who. I wonder who the um, the enemy was. It didn't. They didn't specify in the country. Yeah, I, I would assume Russia, but no. yeah, it kind of <laughs> seemed like that. <laughs> Never Which didn't age well really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, Chris, you, you uh, watch it just kind of like we always got on the Hunter about not watching the original one. You got to watch the second one. I was hoping it'd been out on DVD or whatnot. I just own it. You could buy it on Amazon, and that That's way not it's the a, same thing. Who uses a DVD anymore? I do. You're an old man. I know. Like you buy it on Amazon, you could watch it on all your devices. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> all right. I don't have a DVD. Yeah, there's, but then if you go I feel like there's not a mainstream. I kind of agree with Chris here, though. Like, there's not a mainstream enough platform. Like, when I buy games, like, there's a couple of websites that, like, I know I'm going to use Steam forever, and I don't mind buying it on there instead of having a hard copy. But I don't know how long I'm going to have Amazon. Like, I mean, Amazon's not going anywhere though. Yeah, but who's to say that you say fuck Amazon later yeah. down the road? And I could see me going away from Amazon very right. easily, yeah. and then being pissed off. I have my all my movie collection on there or whatever. You know, the same thing with iTunes. Like you could buy it through iTunes, but yeah. I, I feel like when am I going to hate Apple enough to never use them again? Like, I haven't bought anything on iTunes in years. <laughs> all one of them needs is their next Colin Kaepernick, and I'm out. So. Yep. I'd rather have the hard copy. And then I can have it right next to my original Top Gun. <laughs> Do you look on Amazon to see if you can buy hard copy on Amazon? <laughs> I've looked. I even went to Target because usually Target's where we get most of our DVDs or Blu-rays. Still, buy it through Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> still gave Amazon the money for it. Yeah. But well, you got a hard copy. Yeah. But it, I mean, I still feel like if you go away from them, I can disassociate yeah. with you and have the hard copy. So I'm still with Chris. Yeah. It's just at, at this point, like a lot of people don't have dvd players like the only dvd player we have is a playstation and we i'm not a gamer i don't game anymore the only reason i have the playstation is so we could watch any dvds that we have <laughs> so dvds blu -ray my sister doesn't have a dvd player uh i mean a lot of people like oh yeah my pc doesn't even have a cd slot anymore yeah, yeah. like all the laptop computers. windows comes on a usb now yeah. like yeah or you just download and yeah so, do it that yeah. way so dvds are kind of phased out now yeah Unless you can, you can find a digital live, copy and somehow. The problem is too. I also live in a place where the internet sucks, so it's easier just to have. Isn't that going to get fixed soon though? Didn't, you guys have fiber now. Can't you change to fiber? They're supposed to in the next couple of years. We're supposed to get Comcast is supposed to come in and redo. Because I had a buddy that signed up for it that lives in yeah. Spring Hill. I and mean, then Quick Trip has it. I can tell you that. Oh, that I know. I live deal. right across the street <laughs> from Quick Trip. Oh, it's got to be close. And then. the fiber is literally right across the roadway. I'm like, can you just bring it in the fucking neighborhood, please? Well, that's Quick Trip if you can get on their unsecured network. <laughs> yeah. What's your Wi-Fi password? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get a Wi-Fi extender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I wish they would just bring it over because literally if you go down 199th over the bridge from my neighborhood, all those have fiber, but they won't bring it over to my neighborhood and it's literally across the street. I'm like, come on. I'm willing to pay you because what I pay now is more than what I'd pay for fiber. <laughs> what do you pay now? $100 a month. Oh yeah, for a hundred internet. Yeah, I pay seventy for yeah. a thousand. It's, seventy is pretty standard. Yeah, now. for a hundred. Damn. And I was like, I, I've been on the phone. I called him today actually because you know I dug that trench. I the only part I haven't done is from my fence line to where it needs to go to the house. I get home and I saw that I didn't see the wire. I was like, okay, cool. Went over there. They literally just scraped it, the grass, put the wire there, and put the grass on top of it. I could still see the wire. <laughs> I was like. I could hit that with my lawnmower right now, and you're gonna be right back out here because you guys are idiots. I called them. They don't. They don't. They're like, oh, there's a note that they're supposed to be coming back and finishing it. I was like, <coughs> what were they out here for two seconds and do this? Because I dug the whole other trench for them. Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, it says. I was like, well, if they're not out here in the next 48 hours, you guys are gonna hear from me. Well, what sucks is once you do get fiber, they're gonna have to run a whole another line. And same, but oh yeah. well. They have to put a box in your yard or a nearby yard. I've already got a box in my backyard. I got two of them. Then, yeah, I don't know why you don't have it. That, yeah. When the box is there, they should be able to do it. Yep. When we did AT&T, they weren't here, so they had to bore underneath the street, put a box in Hunter's driveway, 
and two on either side of my driveway and then run the line. They had to mount a whole nother box to the side of the house and run all new lines everywhere and pain in the ass. Yeah, like, we got a box in the yard. Like every other yard in our neighborhood has a box. I'd love to have it right now. Like my, I've got yeah, everything from Take to upload her uh, YouTube. <laughs> it took me like four fucking days. Jesus, I was fucking pissed. It reminds me of like when dial-up went to. That's what I feel like. I'm broadband. On. Like I literally had it on my laptop, and our internet went down because the dogs chewed up the fucking line because it wasn't dug deep enough. I went to work where we have fiber, and it ten fifteen minutes <laughs> done. I was like, Chris oh is at his gosh. house. He turns his computer on, and you hear that dial-up tone. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's just like, geez. I remember back when we were burning CDs in middle school, early high school, and my buddy, my first buddy, got broadband. And we're like, we just downloaded 18 songs in an hour. Yeah. And that used to take, like, tying up the phone line and, like, a full day. Yeah. Like, That's what it feels like right now in my plays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And when I got to work and did it, I was like, oh, this is so nice. I can't wait. Like, I've got everything for my house network-wise is set up for fiber. Like, just give me the freaking fiber and I'll be great. My wireless router, my I got an extender, <laughs> like ugh. yeah. But when they when you sign up with whatever company, they're gonna give you all that. I'm gonna keep mine. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, I'm not gonna pay to rent their equipment because what you pay, one, like six months, you pay off. Even if you get the, like one of the top of line routers, like I paid like three hundred dollars for mine because it's a tri band and it can do up to like three gigs. Like it pays for itself after six months just with the company because they're going to rent it to you. And they don't tell you that unless you call and start bitching about price. <laughs> like, oh, you're renting that equipment. I was like, what? You said it was free. Well, it's not free. You're renting it. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? Okay, fine. Take the rental charge off. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just probably love you. No, they, <laughs> they do probably. <laughs> probably got like, fuck, this guy's calling again. It's Comcast, though, that's the they're fiber? Sp they're supposed to be coming out with Comcast. I think... I don't I've know. had Comcast when I lived in Overland Park. I can tell you from my very, very negative experience with them as an internet provider, they have the... And I don't mean close to. I mean the worst rating on the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> There's no one below them. It's Comcast at the bottom. Well, I know is well I high hopes for Chris now. <laughs> yeah. All I know is when I was when I first moved there, we signed up for internet. I didn't get a bill, and I kept going like, "What the hell? I'm getting free internet? Is this awesome?" They turned it off randomly like six months later. Like, you haven't paid a bill, and I was like, "I haven't got one." They're like, well, what's your address? And I told them, and they're like, "The service address? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, they're, where are you well, installed?" It? Well, they're like, "Well, it's just Crestone Street, right?" I was like, "No, it's South Crestone Street. There's a difference." And they're like. Oh, there is? I was like, yeah. And I was like, so and they're like, well, okay, we'll turn it back on. We'll send you a bill. Didn't I see had another that with bill. power when I moved in. Yeah. They, we signed up for power, and they never sent me a bill. And I was like, well, I'm just going to let this ride out. And then it was December, and they came and shut off our power in the middle of the night. I'm like, what? We lost our heat. So I had to go get a generator, Jesus. hook it into my heat, and wait like three days for them to come back out once I figured out the issue. Like, yeah. like you guys didn't send me a bill. Like, yeah. And then like... So I went another six months, and I called like every month, like, "Hey, where's my bill? Oh, it's coming, it's coming." I'm oh, sorry. so you got a bill for six months back? They tried to, and they never sent me one because they never put the South in front of the street for the street name. So I was like, "It's I'm not getting one." And then they tried to charge me like a thousand dollars. I'm like, "No, I never got a bill. I don't know what you guys are charging me for." And then I <laughs> disputed them, and I called like daily for like three months. And I wrote down every time I called, who I spoke to, how long I was on hold that for. That makes a huge difference. And yeah. everything. And that, I'm the last person. I was like, all right. They're like, well, you owe this much. I was like, technically at this time, you owe me three grand. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I've been on the phone with you guys every day for almost three months now. My average time has been two hours. I get paid this hourly. This is what you owe me now. And they're like, well, you can't do that. I was like, well, that's what you're doing. You can't charge me for something that I never got a bill for. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? I was like, I've never received a bill from you because you guys did not have the address correct. I was like, we can go to court. I'm ready. And I was like, I got all my logs right here of who I'm talking to. And they're like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, the last person I talked to on this date at this time, and I was bringing up everyone's name. They're like, okay, um, yeah, you're you're going to not 
you don't have to pay anything. It's fine. It's like, all right, I want that on writing and sent to my house. <laughs> and I was like, this is recorded, right? Yep. Okay. Good. We had a, a mutual friend in high school that went through something even worse than that. He had singular, he had one of the first iPhones and something went wrong where every minute for a minute long, his phone would call its own voicemail and then hang up. Oh. And I went with him because he got a like a $12,000 bill in high school. Oh, this geez. is Jacob Olert. So I went up to Singular with him, and he goes, can I get a, a printout of my bill? I didn't know he knew what was going on when we went up there. I would not have gone with him. They handed us a phone book. We had to wait like a half an hour in the lobby, and they hand us his printed bill of like, I mean, <laughs> a phone book. And he goes, he goes, do you really think I have it in me to call my voicemail every minute of every day and hang up and dial again? Because this was back when you paid for minutes. Yeah. And they're like, uh, yeah, you're probably right. You probably didn't. He's like, I would die. He's like, I've done this for two months. He's like, how am I alive? He goes, when, when did I sleep? Like, when did I eat? When did I do? Like, like, what do you think is going on here? And they're like, yeah, you're right. And they took it all off. But, you know, kids these days don't realize what we went through. Having to pay for minutes, which you ran out pretty quick. And Nights then and text, weekends, text messages. friends and family. Like, I remember my first plane, I got grounded because um, you send a text message. It was like five, five cents. cents or yeah. We received one. It was 10 cents. Well, you may not be sending any, but your buddies yeah. are sending you text messages and there's nothing you can do because you're going to get charged. For that. And so, I mean, I got in trouble a lot. Oh, for yeah. Going over minutes, going over. I remember going to the lake and you, you wouldn't realize you were on roaming. And then all of a sudden you're getting charged 86 cents a minute to be on yep. the phone or something like you wanted to call your girlfriend because you were at the lake that weekend. It's like, oh, that cost us $14 because you. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, I can't talk now. I'm out of minutes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, those days, I'm so glad those days are over. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, totally different world. That rem- that sucked. And everybody, and like all my buddies, I'd be like, how are the hell are you out of minutes already? Like yeah. Everybody was always at, like, my girlfriend at the time. I worked minutes. at T-Mobile for a brief period after high school, and in training, one of the instructors told a story about how his younger sister, she got her first phone, she racked up, like, 80,000 text messages in like a month and her parents didn't know she was texting like all night long she wasn't sleeping she'd just stay up and text her friend back and forth (laughs) and it was like an insane bill and he's like it was only because i worked here i was able to take care of it but he's like it it, it was like a several thousand dollar bill for text messages i got in trouble for a 500 hundred dollar one text messaging a girl and (laughs) at night not because you don't when you're texting back and forth you don't keep track of oh five cents five cents ten cents you just you just yep and all of a sudden Oh, oh, at no, the end no. of the month, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom's like, yeah, um, don't come home tonight. <laughs> uh, your dad's mad. Like, oh. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. Glad those days are over. <laughs> yeah. Kids these days are so privileged. Yep. Going on road trips, having tablets. Well, same thing with internet. Like you had... Yeah. Well, internet there was in no your car. Unlimited. That's like a... I couldn't imagine that when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah. All these new cars that I've uh, had to rent with work all have uh, Wi-Fi capabilities, the Wi-Fi's or whatever they are. Yeah, in them. yeah. Must be nice. Yeah, I always tell my son, I was like, you know how lucky you are. You're going across country and you got a tablet to watch. Mm-hmm. He's like, what do you mean, Dad? I was like, when I was a kid, you know what I had to do? Stare no. out the window. <laughs> like, Look out the window. <laughs> That yep. doesn't sound fun. I was like, you think? <laughs> <laughs> we heard yeah. that too, though. Like, yeah. we heard how lucky we were about how we didn't have seatbelts or airbags. We had to lay in the back window. And yeah. Yeah. Yep. It only gets better. They, <laughs> their kids are going to have it exponentially better than they are, too. God, we had to walk 10 miles in the snow to school and 10 miles back. <laughs> Come on. Oh, uh, yeah. But your kids are going to be telling their kids, you know how lucky you had? I had to drive this car mm-hmm. across yeah. the country. <laughs> now I can take a nap while you watch your tablet. <laughs> Yep. yep. <laughs> you know, like bullet trains that you're there in like no time. Oh, that tunnel that they're talking about. Elon's Kansas making City. in L.A. Did you hear about uh, one of those gas stations in Tesla? Uh-uh. So this guy, I guess he owns a gas station and he they put Tesla like charging there. Oh, and they're supposed to pay him? And they're supposed to pay him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he they never paid him for like six months. So he just started putting out a service called Tesla. <laughs> and they're like, I was like, God dang well, imagine if they did that everywhere. They're supposed oh, to be yeah. paying rent, and they're not. Well, they can't keep up with the demand. So if <laughs> yeah. they can't find a, a someone to partner with like that, 
they put in a giant diesel generator. Yeah. And I saw, I read that it was the equivalent of getting between six and seven miles per gallon of diesel to charge your <laughs> Tesla. I'm like, yeah, we're really winning here. Yeah. You, you guys are nailing it. It's basically mm-hmm. a semi truck driving down the highway now. Like, great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Be smart. <laughs> and even if it's on, so let's say you, you put it back onto the, the power grid, you know, yeah. it's going that way. We're going to have to, triple our our production of nuclear and coal and yeah. all it's like what are we really saving here but our power grid can't keep up with it because yeah. Uh, yeah that's what i'm saying we're going to triple of like what we have like a, they're gonna have to have every home's gonna have to have solar <laughs> california i don't know if you guys saw this so you they're the gonna have, they're gonna have issues going to all electric cars and they're already having issues now but they just passed a new bill that they don't want any home to have anything but electric heat by 2030 so you can't use gas to heat your home. You have to use electric, and you have to have an electric car, and the grid can't support that. Now. <laughs> yeah. Now the grid can't support itself. Yeah. They so smart. Nailed it. Can we just get rid of California, like, literally? If they would just break off, finally, with that fault line. Yeah. They could become their own territory. <laughs> that, and like, New York and Illinois. New Jersey and Illinois just kind of break away. Let us free states do our own thing. <laughs> but, well, cool. I think we should probably wrap it up. Sounds good. Yeah. We're going on for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we appreciate, we appreciate you guys watching, tuning in. Jacob, thanks for coming back. Thanks for hanging me. out. Like this whiskey, the uh, triple mash. We definitely Daniels. recommend the bite went away entirely with the ice. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so good. Cool. Well, uh, stay tuned for uh, next week. We're going to have somebody from Right to Bear Arms on talking about self-protection insurance. So tune in for that. Take us out, Chris. Have a good one.